Hey there everybody, it's Daikaiji Tony here, and today, for my one-shot review, I'll be talking about the new movie, Resident <laughs> Evil. Welcome to Raccoon City. <laughs> Welcome. Alright. Welcome. Okay. Welcome. This movie. Oh man. As a, as, a, as a hardcore Resident Evil fan, it hurts. It hurts me! <sighs> but first, I'll go over what I liked first. The cinematography, because... You could tell that the filmmakers wanted to show the beautiful sets as much as they could. And I liked the way it was paced. I liked the lighting. And, well, what else? <laughs> the makeups and gore effects. Yes. These zombies look way more better than the ones in the Paul W.S. Anderson movies. They actually look sick, dying, decayed. Uh, <laughs> that, the zombies actually feel pulled straight from the games. Um, William Birkin, his first form before turning into a big ugly monster, it's mostly practical effects except for the eyes that blink in his arm, and it looks good, but despite my problems with his scenes. Uh, <laughs> the CGI monsters are okay at best. There's, a, there's one zombie dog. Uh, would have preferred if oh, they just... Zombie yeah, I would have preferred it if they just put makeup in a real dog instead of just CGIing it because it worked before with real dogs. Why can't you just do it with this? And G uh, G in his final form, it's okay f at best. Uh, the characterizations of each character with the given runtime and how much the story tries cramming in is okay at best. Like, I didn't expect a one-on-one -on -one adaptation of the games. I expected some creative differences and creative liberties put into the story, but I wasn't too insulted by it. <laughs> you like that they were set in Atlantis with what? vampires instead of zombies? <laughs> Atlantis. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Um, yeah. I pretty much like the first half of the movie. Up until a certain point of the story where it's no longer in the police station and the mansion and Leon and Claire go into the Raccoon City. Games this? Yes. This well, uh, uh, this is a a remake. Okay, of so the series? Movie, yeah. oh, okay. Movie. Okay. Okay, th this reboot since this is supposed to kickstart a the Resident Evil movie series. It's a, co a combination of Resident Evil 1 and 2 as in the events happen Yikes. together. Uh, uh, well, they did ham it fair fairly simultaneously or like a few days before, right? Uh, what do you mean? Resident Evil 1, I think, happened only a couple days before, too, right? No, months. No. Yeah. Brad was dead for all that time? No, Brad died during the Raccoon City incident. Oh, that was in the new one. And it, go ahead. I'm yeah. Sorry. Yeah, get your crap together. Okay, so Please. the moment the stories start blending together, the two stories, is when it starts falling apart. Uh, <laughs> well, first of all, First of all, characters who were in Resident Evil 2 and the first game aren't even in here. There's no Barry Burton. There's no Rebecca Chambers. What? Yeah. Brad Vickers is in here. Okay, and... No Brad? <laughs> well, oh, yeah, no, never, yeah, Brad's here. Never mind. Um, what was I going to get into? I do appreciate how I understand that they couldn't cram every single monster in there, so they just referenced it. Jill Valentine says to Richard, what would be a worse way to die? Get eaten by a giant snake or get eaten by a giant shark? <laughs> As a reference to the way right, Brad um, uh, Richard the dies in the, in the remake. Okay, so the negatives. So, basically, Raccoon City incidents happening. Stars members are in the mansion. Chief Irons, Claire, and Leon are in the police station. They get out of the police station. They go into the Raccoon City orphanage. Chief Irons gets killed by a liquor that comes out of nowhere. Lisa Trevor's in this movie, and she's a good oh. guy. A liquor. What? Yes. And, like, there's... She's, she's not even in the mansion at all, and there's no reason for her to have faces stitched to her or anything like that. It, it just Yeah. And then it gives... It's, the movie starts giving me Godzilla 2019 vibes with the fan service that just comes out of nowhere and contributes nothing to the plot <laughs> because there's a part where Claire plays a recording of the Ashford twins from Code Veronica, and that just comes and goes. Wow, they threw some Code Veronica in there. Yeah. I like that game, actually. Um, Wesker. Game. I kind of like 
Wes Grinder's movie because he's played by the guy who played Luther in Umbrella Academy. Um, who? Luther in oh. Umbrella Academy. Oh, uh, Tom Stop. Yes. Stoppard. Um, his, he's a he's a less evil bastard version of Wesker and more of a I'm just I'm just following this company's orders. Like, <laughs> and the moment the story clash is when, oh man, Wesker comes to William Birkin. Give me the samples. William gets shot. He gets shot, and that gets shot in the head. It just happens within less than a minute. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and William injects himself with the virus, and oh yeah, in this version, Claire and Chris are orphans from the Raccoon City orphanage, and William took care of them. <laughs> what? And and William was like a father figure to Chris. William Birkin? Yes. What? And William is like a lot older than Wesker. <laughs> and oh my God. What? And he's like, oh, and when he's when Williams like walking around as a mutated monster, he's like, oh, little Chris Redfield, oh, <laughs> I'm like, what the hell? What is going on? <laughs> yes. No, I have to watch this. <laughs> um, Wes uh, Westgar takes the sample, but he's about to like threaten to shoot Sherry after shooting Annette in the head. Uh, <laughs> and Annette gets no character development in this movie whatsoever. Um, Joe shoots Wesker, and Wesker's like, oh, they're gonna bomb Raccoon City. Uh, Okay, and speaking of Raccoon City, I appreciate the detail put into it and how it's a small town compared to like a metropolis like in the second Paul W. Sanderson movie, but, but... Yeah, it was ridiculous. It was like big city. Here, here, yeah. Here's the thing. There's the explanation that Umbrella is moving city to city with its experiments and every time, every time an, an accidental leak happens, they have to like leave the city. Well, that makes sense. That tracks. It, ha <laughs> it happens in Raccoon City and... Within months, people slowly turned to zombies because apparently water got infected. They didn't really, they don't even specify, they don't really clarify if it's the T virus or G virus or go full on, full on death with that, which kind of bugged me. But well, here's the, the T virus. But here's the thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, go ahead, go ahead. but here's the thing. There are, there are shots with hardly any zombies roaming the streets. It makes Raccoon City to com come off as a town with like, Less than a thousand people. Huh. The only time you Disgusting. see Disgusting, it's a hamlet at best. The only time you see like hordes of zombies gathered together is when they're trying to break into the RPD. Budget. Yep. Well actually it had around the same budget as the first uh, Resident Evil movies. Which, if you look at inflation, is a lot less. Huh. <laughs> yeah, so move the movie ends with Leon and Claire meeting Chris and Jill and Sherry because Jill rescues Sherry. That's how it ends. Um, they go to the train because Brad's helicopter got blown up. <laughs> um, they f Did they get their alternative outfits off the key from Brad's corpse? <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> they encounter a big, ugly version of William that hardly looks like the version from the game, but that's no okay. Mr. X? Oh. Oh, okay. You want me to get into Mr. X? I'll go into it real quickly. Oh, okay. You know how Anguirus was in Godzilla King of the Monsters 2019 in the background as a skeleton? Yeah. In William Birkin's lab, okay, and the nest, the nest is in this movie, but it looks like a dirty basement. In William Birkin's lab, I didn't even notice it when I first saw it, somewhere in the background that's all blurred up is Mr. X's head in the jar. Yeah. What? Yeah. Okay. That's it, huh? that's Mr. okay, so yeah, the movie ends with Leon rocket launching Birkin. They escape. Raccoon City gets blown up, even though you hardly see the city itself get blown up. Yeah. Post credit scene Wesker gets saved by Ada. They give an explanation of why he wears glasses. It's like, oh, the virus we injected you with, like, oh, um, <laughs> like it made you blind, so you need these glasses. What? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> no more lizard eyes, mutant, mutant lizard eyes. And that was Resident Evil Welcome to the Raccoon City. And honestly, it makes me sad because it feels like the Spider-Man 3 of video game movies. Like, this could have been a faithful and pretty good adaptation of the games, but no. You just have to cram two stories together. How hard would it could it have been to just to separate one game from the another? Sounds like the Witcher series, too. Yeah. What would you give it? So much shit. I give it, it rate after four stars? Two, out of, two out of four stars since I liked half of it. And <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Yep. Daikai Tony, signing out.